So now I'll talk about the polyval function. And a poly polyval is a function which is used to evaluate an expression, whether it's a straight line equation, a polynomial, or any type of expression at a certain value. And it's important to understand that in MATLAB, an equation is represented using something called a vector of coefficients. So let's start by introducing this sort of expression or vector of coefficients. Where basically, if I have a straight line equation, let's say, for example, you have a straight line equation, straight line, which has the equation y is equal to 2x plus 3. So I could represent this using a vector of coefficients equivalent to 2, comma, 3. Whereas you can see, I'm just listing the constant numbers um, in the equation, starting from the one with the highest order down to the constant itself. So for example, if I have a straight line equation, but in this case, it's just equal to 2x. So in this case, my constant of coefficients will be equal to 2 comma 0 because you always have to start with the number with the highest power going down all the way to the number to the zeroth power constant which is the your, your, your constant in this number again let's take a third expression third example let's say I have a polynomial of this form y is equal to 3x squared plus 5x plus 10 in this case the uh, vector, vector of coefficients will correspond to 3, 5, 5, 10. So again, I'm just listing the constants or the coefficients next to the variable, starting from the highest power down to the constant number. And um, in your homework, for example, I think you had a bunch of examples where it looked something like this. 3x to the power 3 plus uh, 4x, for example. So, so in this type of expression, expression again, the logic is the same. same. Vector of coefficients, you start with the coefficient for the highest power variable. So in this case, it's 3x cubed. Then one below it is x squared. There is no coefficient for x squared, so it's going to be 0. One below it is x, the coefficient for x is 4. And then one below it is the constant, there is no constant, so it's going to be 0. So this is the vector of coefficients for this equation, 3x cubed plus 4x, okay? So now going to the idea of polyval. So let's say I have an equation which is just your typical polynomial, let's say it's 2x squared plus 6x minus 1. It's just a typical polynomial, um, and I want to represent this equation using its vector of coefficients, so I'm going to you don't need to use p, you can call it whatever, it's just, it's an array where you're storing numbers. So let's call it v, for example. So v will be equal to 2, 6, minus 1. And again, we start with the coefficient of the variable with the highest power, so in this case it's 2, because 2 is the coefficient of x squared, and then it's 6, because 6 is the coefficient of x, and then minus 1, because minus 1 is the constant. So this is the vector of coefficients, and then, if I want to evaluate, let's say, you want to evaluate the above polynomial at x equals 5, right? So you have a polynomial, you want to find the value of y when x equals 5. So you could use the polyval function, and I'm going to say polyval, and polyval takes two inputs. The first input is your vector of coefficients, so it has to be an array. And, and then the second input is the point at which you want to evaluate it. So let's say v, comma, 1.5, and it will calculate this expression at 1.5. And you can double check it. So I can say y is equal to 2 multiplied by 1.5 squared plus 6 multiplied by 1.5 minus 1, and you're going to get the same number. And um, you could use polyval by just putting the array directly. So let's say you don't necessarily want to store it in a variable and then use polyval. So I can use polyval and call the vector of coefficients directly. So you can say polyval 2 comma 6 comma space sorry 6 minus 1 comma 1.5 and I'm going to get the same number. So again polyval is used to evaluate an equation 
using its vector of coefficients at any point. And it's a very useful tool, especially when curve fitting and doing regression, as I'm going to talk in the next video.